this podcast has been delayed by Phil going off to, to find Flapjack, but all the Flapjack's gone. Um, but there is falafel and pakora. I mean, it's the most... Um, I said bourgeois, which I don't think is the word. I don't know. Artisan. Artisan. Bohemian. Uh, bohemian. Launch to a rugby league season there's ever been. The, the thing that, that struck me in the... In the uh, by the way, it's 420, we're back. Uh, but, but not in vision. No. Uh, the thing that struck me... Because we're in a dark... This is another old warehouse in Manchester. This is, well, the, Leeds doesn't have enough old warehouses they can launch Super League. Corn Exchange. It's too light in there. That's the problem. The, the thing that I thought when they mentioned Ian Laybon will have been to a million of these launches was, how many pens do you reckon he got over those? Note pants that he never got the chance to use. Very sad. And we'll reflect on those, I think, in the future. Because it's, it's difficult to put... There's been so many key passings in rugby league, as, as Brian Carney mentioned at the launch, that these things seem to come in gluts sometimes, but this is a, yet another the, uh, sad I mean, cloud over the, the start of it. Just clearly, a, from the media's point of view, a pall over the press box. Um, it won't be the same again. Ian wasn't going to be in the press box as much next year anyway because he, he'd taken a step back. He was only going to do some odd games, I think, some Huddersfield games. and he was going to watch his beloved Batley more. Um, but, but as long as I've been in a press box, he's been there and a friendly and a welcoming face and voice and passionately cared about the sport and that came over in everything he wrote but it, it, you're right you know when you put sort of David Oxley Maurice Holroyd Bob Ashby Fred Lindock Malcolm Lord um, and now desperately sadly for those of us that knew him really well Ian um, it does feel as though somebody's run a line under an era and yes most were of an age where you would think there was a sense of inevitability about what would happen um, but to all happen at the same time, you know, m- maybe this is a new era for the sport, and and it's almost a metaphorical way of saying this is how we have to move on. To go from something sad to something ridiculous, because I've just noticed. I I was told earlier. I'm not going to mention the club, but a Super League club had booked train tickets for two o'clock to get back to their destination. It wasn't Catalans. Uh, We'd already it, gone because their flights were leaving. And it's one twenty-five. Mm. I, I mean, I know Manchester's got rapid transport and everything it's not like late but uh, I think they might miss that train I think they're going to no, no, mind you having said that what was also odd is that we had a very formal launch yeah. almost like we were all in the recording of a, a Sky Sports show um, but they didn't interview Huddersfield yeah. Leeds or Castleford on stage so Kitling Beavers was on there what more do you want is there a Yorkshire uh, anti-Yorkshire Could bias I think there must be I think there must be Take that into the new season, new Northwesterners. Without knowing uh, the budget of that club as well, I mean, that, that, that's changing train tickets. That's, you know, where's, uh, what's his name? What's he called? Mayor of Manchester. He used to run the Andy Byrne. Andy Byrne, that's it. That's re- Tracy Brabbing going to be He'll doing. reimburse them. At least the buses are cheap. So it's the brand new 2023 season. I know the championship has started, but I couldn't get to Keithley, so uh, apologies. But we're here in Manchester. Where the World Cup was launched, did it say 12, well, it's 12 weeks between the final and mm. the launch of this, and we've had another couple of months on to that. It feels a lot different, and I know we, I've kind of been stuck in this, that the World Cup was very much a, an exclamation point rather than a full stop on this, because we'd built it up for so long, had the delay, had COVID, had everything go wrong, and then it happened and it was great, and then it finished now, and I was completely rugby girl, and now Super League's back. I don't, know, I don't know if low key is the right word, but walking in here today, it didn't feel. And this is not a negative, this is not, I'm not being negative, right? Because I'm excited. Once it gets underway, I'll be like, great, rugby. And I'll be really looking forward to watching Saints this week. But it does feel it's just. We're, we're, we're not quite, we're not jumping into this new season just yet. No, I think part of that is because what, what we were sold was a new vision. You know, IMG are coming in, it's going to look different, it's going to feel different. Um, and actually, there's an element of it all feels a little bit the same, other than, and this, it's nothing to do with geographical location. Um, so we have lost a Lee. Uh, yeah, we've gained a Lee at the expense of a Toulouse, um, which is, you know, n- not talking about the respective merits of the clubs or the players that they've signed or they, whether they deserve to be in Super League or not, but 
as an outsider looking in, it would feel a smaller place. And I think that's been reflected in the launch. It's only a week out. We've just seen the, the, the launch video and, and you know, brilliantly produced and fine production values. But the message is exactly the same. It's just different, different people and a different voice. As, as a but but the, the message is essentially the same. You don't know who these people are. I just feel everything on this program from other people saying things. Like, oh, it's, it's someone else, someone, I was speaking to someone before the launch, and a wise person said to me, we, it's not the, the 12th team. We want someone with something exotic and exciting. And Lee's not exotic or exciting. But it's nothing against Lee, because they've got leopards, obviously. You know. it's well, not to lose, uh, so. we want the Puyong, Puyong, uh, Puyong. Puyong Press. Shirts available soon, by the way. I hope you'll be buying them. Authentic yeah, shirts available. Genu- genuine pile Un- of unlike, merchandise. Unlike a wheelchair team of yeah. note who um, doesn't have merchandise. John Davidson stand there. I've, I've been to Seoul recently. Does that qualify me? Uh, I've heard people say that about him before. Our Seoul. Ah. All the, all the other you cross best. it. <laughs> I'll knock it. Uh, Incheon. In- 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 <laughs> yes, I'm short of a few Incheon. <laughs> John Davidson, did you enjoy the... Uh, Thing, long, the thing, um, yeah, it's okay. Um, I think that's yeah. the thing, though. It's okay is not what we were expecting. No, no that's I not the strap line. It doesn't say no. at the end of the video. They, they're all there. It's okay. Super League. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. what, was the, what was the strap line again? There's, There's nothing, nothing like, like League. There's nothing like League. What I found interesting, I mean, as as Phil said, it was it was pretty standard. You know, it's the atypical players kind of in a. Fox NRL style studio and then cut together with um, some tries some tries yeah I mean and well what seemed to be a probably a, a southern Afro-Caribbean yes. voice I guess it's which a is different which voice is different. Yeah. No, it was like a, there's a rap soundtrack to it which, it, which almost is, but the action yes. urban that's right Ice Cube um, the, the action is pretty generic rugby league action yes, we know yeah, that wingers yeah. score great acrobatic tries yes. we know there's some big hits no names to the players so again, if you don't know who they are, you're not building. Maybe that's stars. because of people outside the existing fans don't know the players. Maybe that's. But, uh, but that's who we want to sell it to, not us. Yeah, I think I think the interesting thing is the use of league, which perhaps you know at a time of rebranding and rugby union is basically just taking ownership of rugby. Are we just going to become league? Not not even super. No, I know, no. I know. Because other competitions now have used Are you talking about that? women's football? Are you talking well, about there, are, there are so many. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about the Indian Super League, uh, or the Greek Super League. Um, Big fan of the Greek. Polish extra class. Yeah, oh, Panathinaikos, yeah. Olympiakos, Giants. You know um, no, no, I think... I think <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to be That's serious okay. for a minute. Oh, um, yeah, no, I think me and Phil have talked before. I mean, while this is a nice venue, I'm sure you've talked about it, it's exactly the same venue that we were here for the World Cup in September. So it's a little bit, a little bit going through emotions, and I, and I think if you're looking, you know, Phil's probably been to a hundred of them, but I've been to a few now. Probably four or five years ago, there was a lot more journalists, a lot more media. It um, was good to see a lot of young people here, and I think that's um, probably an, indi- like an indication of digital and, um, you know, I, I get that you you need an event like this. I, th- I think the timing of it is odd. I think every club's had their media day, so what two, it, two have got their media day tomorrow. Tomorrow, so so what are you going to get out of that that you didn't get today? It was great. It was saying it was like we were the audience for a Sky show, which is fine. Mm. But then once all those questions have been asked on stage, there isn't a mm. lot left before the season actually kicks off to ask all of those people that you then get the chance to interview. So and the promo video launches tonight. Should we have not been running the promo video for three weeks? Should we not have been, you know, radio ads? Well, I, 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 those I are the most amazing we, things ever, we, according to Lee, aren't they? People, I mean, Lee are running ads for their first game, which is great, but it's like people thinking this is some kind of mystical thing. That's the radio, commercial radio has been going since the 1970s. Well, one, one thing I noticed, um, and you never hear anything about rugby league and commercial radio in England, was except the World Cup. And it was before, you know, it was months before the World Cup, and it was during. Obviously, they had, um, I think it was Radio One that had said Sharon, you know, and, and, and it was in their bulletins, which was fantastic, but. That's all gone. You know, surely we need to exist, be out. You know, the, the traditional media, and it's it's you know targeting Joe UK. It's targeting Lad Bible and Sport Bible, and getting coverage in these sort of places. I'm just hoping they get their train on because it's at two o'clock and it's one thirty-two now. They're going to get. I don't know which train station in Manchester they're going to, but there's only fifty. Exactly. Probably it's not. If it's Oxford Road, they're all right. Um, you know, this is a thing I've mentioned for a while. And, and Leeds have done it on, on their website. 
and I don't know why we haven't done it in Superbrick, and it's a minor point, and as I always say, it'll never get used. We've gone to Leeds website, and it's got the teams, hasn't it? And it says men's, women's, wheelchair. Why doesn't it say men's above the Betfred Super League logo, which is the men's competition? I think the big positive today was there was a direct link mm-hmm. to women's and wheelchair. Yeah, and, no, that and, was and that is carrying on from the World Cup. So if that is a legacy of the three tournaments work together and feed off each other and you can't rely on solely on the new stories from the men's game anymore, then that was great. And Caitlin Beavers and uh, yeah, obviously spoke really well. And, um, Rob Hawkins, you'll hear them all on the podcast. Rob right? Hawkins was, well, was, was say, great, you know, and it was it was good to see. You know, you, you generally get the same faces, don't you? The same voices. It's good to see that change. Yeah. Um, I, but yeah, the, I, I think I think that the disappointing. It's just more of an observation. But it's the Betfred this, the Betfred that. We're all in on gambling sponsorship. Do we have any other sponsors? Why do we not have any other sponsors? I think we're the only How spo- can we change that? Well, the sponsor hasn't swapped Betfred for Kazoo yet, which is it's, it's the only sponsors everything else now. But again, it's fine. That's, I, I that's bought a car from Kazoo. On. It doesn't feel different. No. Because no, Betfred are great sponsors, but nobody is associate sponsor or. No. No, a not. competition now isn't being sponsored by somebody else, so it's you know, with a great respect, it still will be the Betfred Challenge Cup. But uh, there's also that that you know the future of gambling sponsorship mm-hmm. market. I mean, what, what were we, we were tobacco in the 70s and 80s, and you know, if I think what, I think if you were all aligned in one sector, and then that sector is ruled out by legislation, what do you do? If I mention darts, people get upset. Oh, talk, talking about darts, yeah. Well, the A, the world champions from St Helens, is essentially he's on the pitch and everything. It's very boring. Oh, <laughs> Well, not a sport, but anyway, yeah, sorry. Yeah. But, but thousands of people go No, they do, it. which it baffles me. I've, it baffles I've me. been to the Sheffield Arena to watch the darts, Premier League darts, sat at the back on the floor. You can't see a thing. And how many times have you been to the Olympic Legacy Park to see the mighty Sheffield Eagles? Well, zero times. See, there you go. And, I don't, I and could, you've been for the use, ice hockey as well. I can use the press as well. Sheffield. Indeed. Um, but on the darts, they have about a million associate sponsors. Hmm. Now, a lot of, they've moved away a lot from, uh, still a lot of bookmakers sponsoring things, but because they've sponsored the World Championships recently, but on their website, a million different, I think they've got tyre manufacturers and swan matches, I don't know how much they throw in, uh, and a million different other things. So the the money's out there, the sponsors are out there, I guess we just have to find them. Hopefully the well, new RL commercial thing will find them. They are sponsoring other things. Which again so. is what, I mean, unless RL commercial are going to announce later this afternoon that they are bringing a major sponsor into the game, which will be embargoed until the weekend, I think. So we won't be able to tell you. We won't be able to tell you. Not exclusive. We need something to get our teeth into that isn't the run of the mill. And it does feel a little bit like we're coming out of a World Cup where there was a profile and we've dropped down a level with Super League. I think there's... Yeah, you can't argue with that, and I think obviously what hasn't helped is the um, the impasse with the RLPA and the NRL, which has essentially held up the international calendar. So we had momentum in the industry, and we had a fantastic World Cup in many respects. We weren't talking about ticket prices or attendances, but there was some, you know, as a product, and you know, England, the wheelchair was it was amazing. Um, but we have what one game? Well, England, France in men, women, and wheelchair, and that's that's all we have. In what point? Yeah, again, we just seem to love to go to the Hollywood Jones to get about five or six thousand people. It's yeah. not a knock on wine, I mean, so no. we saw during the World Cup, was the county Sheffield nearly 20,000 for the Greece game? And people who have no idea about rugby league probably would have known that that game would have been the score when it would have been. At this point, was it wasn't 100 nil. Nottingham, Birmingham, yeah, you know, take things on London, the, I mean, Wimbledon, ironically. Which is the wrong use of the word, but I am uh, alarmist. Do you know the word that everybody's using wrongly at the moment? Alluded to. Alluded to. Stop using alluded to. Everyone. Sources. It's not the meaning that you if think. If it's not it on the um, front page of the next magazine, <laughs> I think if you look at um, international sport in this country, so the, the big international sports, cricket, we don't count because that goes everywhere. That's what it is. But rugby union, quicker. England football, Wembley. And as soon as I say that, I'll get an email from the uh, FA saying, come buy tickets to go see England at Old Trafford. They're playing North Macedonia. Oh, right, fair enough. Oh, well, the Giants of North Macedonia. Yeah. The mighty North they beat, Macedonia. They beat South Macedonia. <laughs> it's the West you've got to worry about. Though. It's always the West on the side you've got to worry about. But Rugby League has that opportunity 
in a sense, to take games to different places because, as we saw during the World Cup at Newcastle, at Sheffield, and whatever, and I know World Cup's a different thing than a regular mid season international, or whatever, but you might find a new audience who are just attracted to international sport well, and England on the market. Middlesbrough, yeah. quite a good attendance, wasn't it? 8,000. Yeah. For Tonga versus Cook. But again, if you only go somewhere once, it, we. we mm. You'll hear. Is this the, the Bristol podcast. effect? Bristol. Well, no, it's, it's Willie Peters who who, we asked, who asked the question when uh, when we were speaking to Gateshead him. Gateshead legend. For one season. And he said he understood it was finances and it moved mm. to Hollywood. But again, what, what would we be talking about at a launch of Super League now if Gateshead had been given the room to flourish? So we're 20, what, what, what are we now, 23 years yeah. down the line? How much would that Super League team have... Uh, benefited the competition and been now established? Like Catalans. But you could say the same perhaps about London. You could even say the same with Lee, who were well, trying L- to break L- a hat trick. London are still there, aren't they? And they keep saying, we, we are going to do something. And well, everybody said they're going to do something, and let's see what it is you're going to do. Uh, I, I, I go back again to grading. You know, we, a meeting has been had with the RFL and their member clubs saying... We propose to bring in grading as part of our proposals, and that, that has been almost unanimously agreed that that's the path we're going to travel now. But the latest we hear in the run-up to the new season is there's now going to be a special meeting on March the 9th to discuss the actual grading proposal, and then that's going to be uh, forwarded to another meeting at the end of April that's going to vote on those proposals. And, and now it's got to the point where it's too long, it's too convoluted. If we're going down the road with grading, just tell us what the grading is. Don't, don't ask for consent let's do it and that would be different and we'd have something to look forward to it's, it's almost like everything's a little bit on, on hold at the mm-hmm. moment definitely which is a shame I well, couldn't agree more well, as soon as the action kicks off next week it'll all be you know, we'll all Absolutely. be we'll straight back into it because then we don't have to talk about governance and stuff until they announce the criteria for grading and stuff what's going to happen this year I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of I've, I've, I've painted myself into a corner that St Helens aren't going to make it five in a row. Drive for five, as Brian Carney said. Every time he says it on the telly, take a drink, non-alcoholic. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if the sponsor put a, a spread on how many times he's going to say it during the season. The drive for five for St Helens. I, I've convinced myself they're not going to win it, and I don't know why. Well, eventually, I mean, I think well, logic eventually they states, won't. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you, I can't, right. you can't win for hey, Brian Carney brings up uh, Mark Applegarf on stage. Here's one of the teams looking to stop them. Wait, the wait, your, uh, We're going to win Super League. We've got a new stand and everything. But yeah, um, I don't know if it's the fact that they're changing coach again, players getting old. I don't know. For some reason, I think Saints aren't going to win. It might might be Wigan. It might be Wigan. It will be Warrington. We know that. (laughs) It's going to be Wigan are going to win Super. I'm going to say Wigan are going to win the men's Super League. Leeds are going to win the women's Super League. And I don't know who's going to win the wheelchair. Well, I think I think in the women's Super League, Leeds. Basically, just signing every good player who's available. So. Well, they are going to lose some, I think, when you to, don't the, have to the NRLW. And who's that? Well, I think there'll be a couple of Leeds players that might be tempted down under. They don't even have a fixture list, let alone a salary cap. Though. Well, I think once that is agreed, <laughs> yeah. I think a couple of the younger internationals might be tempted to go and ply their trade over there. So I don't think Leeds are necessarily just over recruiting. I think they know some of their squad might not be there this I, season. I didn't mean to write off York, though, because they'll get upset. But, uh... Leeds, then York, and St Helens in third. So that's, the way, that's where I'm going for now. But yeah, I mean, I think I think there is there, there's obviously the, the drive for five, um, and eventually, Just a drink. Ev- <laughs> eventually they do have to, to slip off, and you know um, players get older. I mean, James Roby's 400 years old, still playing, but yeah, I think Wigan will be strong. I mean, Warrington, they do have Dad's army, um, but all counts are they're, they're training well, which means nothing. Um, but I can't be as bad as they were last so year. You, got to, you went to the Wigan media, I think. I did, yeah. Did, because you've obviously been uh, buttered up by the Wigan club, as I believe we have to call them. So you're, you're now going to Buttered up, was, buttered was that up, given yeah. access to... Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I was invited to this media, day, unlike, unlike two others. I wasn't invited, so, yeah. Your parsnips were buttered. Yeah, well, look, I'll, I'll do anything for a good coffee and a brownie. Um, you get a pen, you get any Wigan merchandise? The you flap. get a pen, but I left it. I, I have to say, left it. the yeah. flapjack here, yeah. outstanding. Yeah. No, but all jokes aside, I mean, simple things like opening up the club and giving access to your owner, your coach, your CEO, your whole team. 
Not every talking, club does it. No, we were talking about this on the way over. It's it's Super Bowl week in the NFL, and you can speak to everyone. The world's they, get media fined, to they, they get fined if they don't fulfil their meaning. How, yeah, how there was... can that be? The biggest game in the world, in one sport, you know, football, whatever, blah, blah. The Super Bowl, which has worldwide attention. And yet the media has so much access that come to generic Northern Team A versus generic Northern Team B and you get to speak to one coach well, and one player. I've, I've covered FIFA World Cups, uh, Rich, and it's quite similar. They have a very regimented process and open press conferences it works quite well unfortunately there's not and it's all coordinated through the head office there's no coordination you know, tomorrow we've got two club media days on at the same time I mean I'm sorry how hard is it to email it's all 12 clubs and say okay well, when's your media day no you can't have it on that because that's on the same time I mean um, please it's a point made by another journalist wasn't it about which media day was it Salford's media day and the lack of attendance but I, as whatever I am, some silly but I've got I've got accreditation. That must be something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't You're know. wearing it, even though I know. That's why that's why I know where I am. They put my name on. Property. Is it Kenneth? No, it's Richard again now. It's all it's right. It's a great photo. So you look really it's from, pleased. It's from two years ago. Look. <laughs> uh, it's from lockdown. Wait for we're just avoiding relegation. Yeah, that, that, I think that was my uh, staff pass away. I think it looks like your reaction just after you got your latest gas bill. <laughs> <laughs> I just like go out of the bank and still even pay attention. To it. There's a bank. Oh. But I didn't know when any of these media days because I'm not on every club's mailing list. But that this should be centralised. This what? should be coming through the centre of the Considering spot. you can probably count on two hands the number of journalists who cover the game re- regularly. The fact that you're not, and I'm not on every club's mailing list either for some reason. Well, I'm on um, two, I think. And, and, and <laughs> two out of twelve is a great two, result. And, and, well, I used to be on two. I, no, I think I still am on two. I might be on three now when someone's moved clubs. But uh, at least uh, Lee sent me uh, things about ticket offers. Lee sent me that as well. I think I'm on Leeds' as ticket mailing list, but not the media one, which is fine. I don't mind. I'm, you know, I'm an ancillary part you of t- me, You but. two can come to the double headers. Yeah. No, I mean, I've, I've, I've written about the the lack of marketing and promotion and a Patreon piece will be out today um, but it just seems like the simple things like that coordination really we should be getting right and particularly IMG are a global marketing giant and I know they're working on grading criteria but where's the the marketing part of it coming in in terms of the promotion we saw that kind of during the World Cup didn't we where we'd get emails from some nations but not all and then we had the, the great French well, that was, that was the great French debacle yes. well, that, was, that was great fun Yes. I think well, as much as we'll remember the, the great wheelchair World Cup final Tom Halliwell's trying nothing will top the French uh, email mainly like disaster and there was some hour just refusing to do media days <laughs> yeah. except they claimed they didn't and, and running you know media manager of Marty Tapao's wife but then we were we Love were it. talking on the on the way over about how it doesn't cost anything to have a strategy whereby somebody would be talking to Jordan Mylata in this run up to the greatest show on turf at the weekend about where he's come from and linking South Sydney and Rugby League with they were, somebody who's they were doing in, that in Australia. Phil. Who's in the? Fa- Do you know who was talking to him? The Prime Minister of Australia. But over here, <laughs> Anthony Albanese. Who's we, our Prime Minister? We, we we know that we've got some correspondents over there covering the Super Bowl for the channel that broadcasts R- yes. Super League. Yeah. So you know, the last bit. Would you like to send a message to Super League? It starts next week. You know, get, to have a current NFL player who's playing yeah, no, in a Super Bowl link. endorsing your competition. Must not Burgess. Must not Burgess. They are all the Burgesses. Burgess I. Burgesses. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Burgess. I think I um I was speaking Jet, to, like Jedi. I was speaking to Phil in the week about um, Simon Cowell. Australian actor based in London was in this little film called Avatar 2 yep, he was in a little show called Game of Thrones oh, Mad yeah. Cronulla fan I mean, I've not watched any of them but I've heard of them <laughs> you've heard of them well that's yeah, yeah. I mean yeah it, it's it's simple simple things maybe it's messages maybe I mean if you're looking about a, an ad maybe it's a message from Sam Burgess that's it from, that's uh, all uh, now that doesn't cost anything but no if Sky <coughs> excuse me if Sky's correspondent simply to slapjack <laughs> maybe, maybe from um, Are there Barrel, anyway? Maybe from Sean Edwards. Maybe from Kevin Sinfield. Who? Nope. Maybe, maybe you cut together footage of these guys and you say made in league. They might be working in rugby union, but they are made in and league. And there is no cost no. to that. That's no. just thinking laterally. I but think that's the lack of coordination and the lack of thinking yeah. laterally which which does you know, disappoint 
got an exclusive for you. Liam Farrell, not interested in a future job in rugby union. That's the other right. Because obviously, Andy Farrell, Wigan captain, Ireland head coach. Sean Edwards, doing whatever he does with the French. But uh, exactly. Liam Farrell, not interested. Kevin Sinfield, because he's not from Wigan, that's why England can't tackle him. <laughs> I mean, I've not watched any of the Six Nations because I'm muted they didn't, on they didn't, they didn't tackle well on, uh, on against Scotland. Muted, muted but, I mean, he, he, his tackle rate was great because he missed zero tackles. He wasn't on the field. No, he didn't in that World Cup final, though. Uh, oh, final. oh, brutal. Well, look at his night going to mention it. So, brutal. generally a, a sense of... I think I'm ready for the new season. Yes, I but, think we needed a break from the World yeah. Cup. I would like it Apologies personally. to both of our podcast uh, listeners who like what we do, yeah. that we haven't done one for five I would like weeks. To, to see it start in March, personally, but that's just yeah. me. It's fair enough. Well, I was just, uh, just posted a St. Helens program from 1971, I think, where they said the season should be March to November, mm. which is pretty much what, what it was at the start of the season, wasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe March to October. Yeah. But, yeah. but they had more teams. No, I, I, think, I, I think, think there are good, good things in the sense that um, I think it's great that St. Helens have gone to Australia. Playing two games, I think they're there for three weeks. They've taken 26 players. They're taking it very seriously. It's obviously costing them a lot of money. Well, but, but they could come back with a hundred thousand dollars. Could come back as world club champions, which you know I don't think uh, have they ever won. Well, I'm not, I'm, yes, yeah. they have, but they've never won. I believe they've never won the first team. Has never won a game in you know, you know in Australia. Um, you know, over the years. It would be replicating. Wigan's historic win in 1994 yes. in Brisbane. The high watermark of British sporting achievement away from home. Which I don't think they got recognised by the BBC Sport no. Awards that year. I think it's England drew with without the props. Boxes. Without props. And but I think Penrith are taking it seriously as well, which is great. You know, it looks like they're going to play a, a full strength or near full strength team. So. And, and great, it's been built up over in Australia as England yeah. versus Samoa. Yeah. The repeat, because again, that shows that there is a, at last some indication over there that they rate international rugby league and what it can do um, so the NRL journalists are actually wanting to promote that angle which is great because that's building on the back of the World Cup and hopefully as part of the CBA the, the international calendar can then be announced because yeah. I think it's in place to yes. all intents and purposes it just can't be funded that's, at the moment that's a real shame that, that we've had all, and I, but I do understand why because there are conditions tied into mm, you know, how many games players yep. are available. And, and they should be compensated for playing international footy. And I mean, insured. Yes. <laughs> Which is not the case for every country. Um, but that's that's turned very ugly. It just seems like another case of very much two steps forward, one step back, or three very steps much enjoying back. enjoying old players having a go at people shaking the fists at clowns. I think it's all about money. That's, that's yes. It. It's yeah. not, though. It's about terms and conditions. The actual basic payment structure has been agreed for the professionals. It's about, it's about healthcare. And yeah, it's about healthcare for the very young, the, the very old, and the women. And the women, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's something that is worth fighting for. And yeah. that's what this, this sport stood for right at the very beginning. So yeah, it's no. not about greed. No. I think the. the it's easy to paint, paint them as being greedy, but that's not the, not no. the case. No. So clap an NRL player at 8 o'clock every Thursday night. <laughs> Only the ones you like. Not the ones who are in prison. Or in the, uh, what's it called? The stand-down list? The, uh, <coughs> the integrity, the integrity uh, unit. The integrity. What if we had an integrity unit in podcasting? On the rubbing media? There'd be no one here. We'd constantly be on bail. Like, like three people. What do we do? Um, has anything else happened over the uh, last few months? Well, I'm sure we'll come <laughs> back and talk about the championship, which yeah. has started. And... Loads of people signed for the club. But it's more, Mitchell hurt his shoulder. It's more to do with the fact that we can now talk about rugby league because it's happening. John Wayne's still in the job. Well, that's, I believe so, yeah. technically, yeah. I was going to, I was going to ask because I didn't get the chance to ask Steve Manamara any questions. I was going to say two things. What do you, what do you reckon to all this speculation about Steve, about Sean Wayne? Because you were the international coach, you got binned off despite the fact you've done a good job. And two, what are your memories of Wakefield in 2000? You're off there next week and you didn't get paid. What were your memories of? But, but it, they went. He had, a, he had a flight to catch. I know, so. But, I, I mean, ask the good thing is that we had all, well, apart from St. Helens, they are in Australia. Who, who were but here? We had, we who had, were had, here on Zoom? Unlike, which was unlike great. the championship where we only had, we had two clubs missing. Could they have sent like, a, a young player from St. just to be forced to answer well, questions? Well, that's true. It's, They've only got or a cardboard, cardboard, cardboard cut out of uh, anybody injured. <laughs> Paul Scalfield was here. Yeah. That's true. Or he cardboard still looks pretty fit. He could play. Yeah. Sure. Cardboard cut. I said they should have had a cardboard cut out of James Rutt when they have all the captains around. But they did the picture weeks ago, so he didn't have it. 
but it's good, look lovely. It's good to be back, isn't it? The women in the wheelchair trophies now look like the men's trophy. But because we but care, slimmer. we want it to be bigger and better. Yeah. And of course. Yeah. More bells and whistles and more singing and dancing. And there's just a feel that we haven't yet got that. Seven year contract? Should you yeah, talk about that? Well, like the thing, about the, Newcastle, the thing is, that's good for the competition. That It's almost like signalling we've got something, an yeah. asset of the NRL that we can hold on to. He is the current man of steel. And clearly there are conditions in there that if an NRL, if, it, if it blows the competition apart again this They'll year... They'll pay $3 billion to... Uh, but they yeah. will, because they've got a salary cap that can do that. So either way, Salford are insured. It does raise questions of where are Salford finding the money from to have their first yeah. ever marquee player, which is a valid question. Um, of course, they're saying that on the back of it, they're hoping to bring in new commercial income. But um, they haven't yet done that. So I don't think there's the history of long-term or lifetime deals in rugby league would necessarily be guaranteed that they are. No. I mean, J- Jason Zamalolo, I'm trying to think. I mean, obviously the Cowboys want to go and follow in 2015, but I think he signed that deal afterwards. But I do think and it's... And Evans is not... It's a, good, know, it's a good news story for Salford and for, it is, and yeah, for the score. Uh, we, we've got to go and listen to some words. So there might be some. There might be a bit after, so, but, but there might not be. But there will be interviews with people. So what stay if, what if we do something in the car on the way? Home? We might do. We'll do something in the car on the way, and that's what we'll do. But I'll stop. So if you're not on your phone. No, it's, it's all right. I'm, I'm just going to sit there and point at them. I think we're going to end up on a, on a camera. So we're we'll be stuck here. on the M62 anyway. Well, that is, that is guaranteed. You join us on the M62. Is this the M62 or the M60? I always get mixed up at this point. It's the M60 and we're moving, which is the big news. I mean, I used to do this trip back from Chorley when I had a proper job in the days before freelancing. Um, and I still never, could never get my head around all these different motorways. We've been through Salford, we've been in Manchester, we're in the Super League launch, uh, which is now complete. Um, you will read in the next issue of 4020 magazine, which is being put to bed this weekend, uh, words from the leaders of the game. Is it leaders? Is that the right word? Well, the chair of um, Rugby League Commercial and his chief executive. Uh, the people who are trying to make us some money. Uh, Reimagine us. Yeah. Uh, this, it, it's under embargo until Saturday at 6 o'clock, but there's nothing really much. To, you're not missing anything. There's no exclusive. Uh, no. <laughs> They've not said, yeah, we're kicking everyone out. It's going, to, it's going to be just leads on their own. No, they haven't said that. So the, I can't tell you anything. We can't tell you anything, but there's also nothing. I did ask a question. So I thought I'm sat there. You managed to upset the current sponsor. I know, I know. With I mean, question. It's a good job they don't know to work for a different uh, rival firm, isn't it? But <laughs> <laughs> I did really upset them, honestly. But um, you know, we, we come away, and then I think I'll put the interviews at the end of this. Uh, so you can choose whether you want to listen to them or not. But, you know, you heard from John earlier. I don't think... Not negative for the sake of being negative. I think there's think easy things you can improve that can be done, but we never do them. It was a bit of a... After the World Cup, and I know if everything is after the World Cup, and, and how... And the World Cup wasn't perfect. It has to be said. I'm not saying the World Cup was the the greatest thing that's ever happened but it did feel like we took a step back today the la- <laughs> chasing the launch, people around the room the launch of the World Cup was incredibly exciting because we got the chance to pe- speak to people like James Tedesco or Jason Tamalola who you don't see every every no. week so it was always going to have that uniqueness about it I think the the feeling that I've garnered from speaking to a few people about the start of the new season who are fans of the game is that whilst they're looking forward to the action coming back, they did expect that it might look and feel somewhat different, and I'm not sure it does. I think we are. What was the word that, that IMG used without breaking any embargo? We're in a transitional transformation. Yeah. Tra- transition. You, we, you've got to be careful how you we, say trans these days because you might upset me. Which I thought we'd gone through. You know, I thought yeah. we're, we're at the point now where some proposals have been unveiled, have been generally agreed on. We think we know what direction we're moving in. Let's see some evidence of it. And it appears to be we've come up with some proposals. Some of them are theoretical. We're now trying to see which of them are practical. And somewhere in the middle there'll be a compromise. So it's almost like 2023 is a bit of a a holding year, which is how the launch came across. Um, 
yeah, some some nice comments from some really great players and coaches yeah. who we admire, but nothing that we haven't heard before before a ball is kicked. Uh, I've got the chance to talk to people like Willie Peters who we haven't spoken to before. Great. Uh, I think Brian Khan is a great host and he, he did the, the on-stage stuff that you may by now have seen on Sky. The, the, the video is, is okay, it shows the game in a good light, but it's not really different to any other kind of video. We've ever. So I think, yeah, we're pleased that this time next week we'll be going to a game, but I don't feel any more enthused <laughs> post-launch. It, it's, it would just be good to have the rugby back. It would be nice to know where the rugby is heading after this season. Have we... Um... And this is this is an analogy I used in the magazine last year uh, in talking about Channel 4's coverage, but in a different sense then. Have we... It's the Bruce Forsyth's big night analogy. Bruce Forsyth leaves BBC, Generation Game, massive success, goes to ITV, takes over Saturday night. They say it's going to be the greatest thing ever. It's an utter failure. He comes out on telly and says, well, people thought the glitter would be coming out of your screen, which, you know, they haven't invented yet. Remember 3D TV? That was good, wasn't it? But anyway, so we've built up in our minds that there's going to be this great change, everything's going to be different, and that hasn't happened yet, but is that, is that our fault, is that the sport's fault, is, the, is it everyone's fault? I think we were given an indication when IMG unveiled their proposals, in a lot of detail, that certain things had happened. So we had got rid of promotion delegation, we were bringing in grading. The Challenge Cup was going to move. We were going to get rid of loop fixtures. Magic we weekend is gone, but it might be. <laughs> and we were going to align ourselves with the NRL. And, and none of that has happened. And a slight indication from today is there's still process to go through to make that happen. So I think that, from our point of view, would be a, a, a disappointment. I don't think that detracts from the fact that the one thing we do know is that when when the players get on the field yeah. we'll, have, we'll have things to talk about and there'll be controversies and opinion and I, I just think when IMG were announced in a 12 year deal I didn't think the first year would be taken up in nothing really changing I think when I went to the Dale did big I did cheese but went to Dale big uh, we're on the M62 live here on Not 420 Live I'm um, still moving there are many things and, and again this is from outside our bubble I don't think that all the issues in rugby league are unique to rugby league because I read a lot about racing at work <laughs> and they have their own issues with quality of output on the courses and everything. I mean, the, 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 you've seen the big thing the other week where the jockeys club are scrapping dress codes for certain yes. things so you can just turn up in whatever you want. <laughs> apart, from the, apart from Royal Ascot, you can't just turn up a wave at King Charles wearing flip-flops and a pair of shorts. They try to find ways of attracting new audiences. and you, you, they, they try concerts for years, but the problem with the concerts is they that upsets the regular race guy who doesn't want to pay to go see Scouting for Go Girls. Banana Rama. Yeah. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to see Banana Rama? But... We're not unique in this trying to find a new audience. Everyone's trying to do it. Cricket Absolutely. with 100 is obviously the, the example in recent times. Rugby Union, and, well, I mean, they've ruined their European Cup, I keep reading. Yeah. So that's, that's quite amusing. Um, but they still get loads of coverage on the telly. So we're not unique in trying to find new ways of finding new audiences. But I don't know what they... I think... Did, is that what we expected from IMG? That, that they, that, not that there'd be a genie in the bottom and everything would turn around significantly but it just hasn't there's not enough happening right now and they mentioned the new event um, you know magic may be replaced by a new event details to be worked up no details yet so I think you know we need to know what a new event looks like what are they thinking of is it a short form is it still going to be a Newcastle is it going to involve all the clubs is it going to be more like the the NRL nines were you know played over a weekend with a winner take all prize various little bonus schemes, a bit like the, the NRL innovative pre-season challenge that's going on at the moment where, you know, the more offloads you get, the more tries you score, the more bonus points you get, cash prize at the end, suddenly those two games that you play in pre-season have got a lot more meaning. Is uh, the, the, the Mackerson Trophy, they're bringing that back? Uh, yeah, or Captain Morgan. <laughs> but we don't know what it is and no. we're now told today 
they haven't worked it up yet either. And it'll be voted on by the clubs, and it, you know, I'm like, yeah, I thought we got past that. It's something that Brian Noble said right at the very beginning when uh, when he we came up with a potential look of how the game would be. That it all starts with the governance, and unless you change the governance and allow people to make decisions outside of the clubs, this process will be horrendously slow. So we've now got a partner in who everybody is telling us is you know, top of the market, more influence than anybody else, 70 extra brains on the sport, I think we were told in the, in the briefing. Um, got access to everything you would need in terms of negotiating deals, uh, either with broadcasting companies or potential sponsors. Great, we'll hand it over to you. You tell us now what we need to be and what we need to do. And it's like, well, we'll come up with these ideas, then we'll give them back to you. But if you don't like them, because if you're going to be disadvantaged by them, you could say you don't like them, but then we might take that back on board. And like, no, I think we've gone past that. And the, the history of the game is littered with various occasions where people have tried to do that and it hasn't been done very well. I'm just hoping that this isn't another one of those those occasions. So this podcasting. This is what it is. If you don't like it, tough. That's what they've got to say to people. And then if the listening figures fall, well, it's our fault. We've made that decision. If you want to suggest somebody who comes on it, absolutely happy to listen to you. But, you know, we're... It, it's... You need a dictator. You need a figurehead. And, uh, yeah. Dictator might not be the right <laughs> word, but it probably is. I think a benevolent dictator. Yeah. With uh, a, a, a David Oxley and, and Morris Lindsay are different kinds of leads yes. right. I also think with a limited spell in office so that you get your opportunity to bring in your change if you can negotiate it manage it and deliver it that's great but after six years it moves on we, we need some stability though we, and I don't think what we've heard today at the moment takes us along the road of, of, of any great degree of certainty as to what's going to happen in the future and, and also clearly we, we've got to go to our primary broadcaster and negotiate a new deal with them pretty damn quick and the <laughs> the structure we're going to have will have to be in place the sponsors who might come on board on the back of that have got to know what it is we're trying to negotiate and it's all it, it, the, the analogy and it was used is the ducks are really moving across the water and it's legs paddling frantically are, the, are those it. ducks embargoed? oh uh, <laughs> that analogy is currently embargoed um, but at some point you've got to go public with yeah. and, you, and, and you have to be prepared to make decisions that not everybody is going to agree with but it's in the best interest of the game because you proved to the game that you are independent um, so IMG are independent the new RL commercial board is drawn from uh, both the RFL and Super League as well as but three independent directors all of whom have got a huge amount of experience in there their own area of expertise, some of which is digital marketing, some of which is broadcasting partnerships. One is indeed a long history in the game of rugby league or understanding of the history of the game of rugby league. You're right, when those people we invest our future, tell us what we need to be. Don't come back to us and give us an idea and allow us to circumvent that. I think I'm digital media now. I think that's my that's oh, my yeah. that's my sector. Sounds good. Because that's what they kept saying, written and digital. Not, broadcast is a different thing now, so I, I, I feel like I've got a new thing I can put on my email signature that no one pays attention to anyway. <laughs> um, interesting times, interesting times, always interesting times. The best thing is, as you mentioned, by this time next week, when people hear this, we'll be talking about what's going on in the film. And we could talk about what's happening in the championship, but I, I haven't seen the game, so they don't. Just post them on social media. Well, I've seen a few of the feathers and tries, but. This is de- we're talking Gareth about Gale for I know first try of the season, wasn't it? We're talking about digital. Uh, for, 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 we're talking about digital. Yeah. We're talking about um, you know some clubs don't even have websites that work properly. Social media is, is patchy. I think that's where IRL Commercial Stroke IMG can really help those clubs who don't have the resource. I'm not blaming clubs who don't have 27 people working in their media department. They can't be expected to be at the level of a Premier League football club, but that's where you've got the the brains trust to help out. Um, maybe the, you know we have well, not only help out, but actually give you the the kind content. of content you should be posting. I mean, Super League put to, paid for those um, 
the branding a few years ago, the, the uniform branding, because I know because I was working at Wakefield at the time, which not all the clubs used, which was daft, but, he, but at least had a uniform look. All the, all the club fixtures and whatever looked the same, and, and we don't have that same kind of uniformity at the moment. Um, but as soon as the action gets underway in Super League next week, this all takes a, a slight back step. Not that we won't be paying attention to what's going on, of course, but good weekend in the Championship, it, it looks like, in terms of crowds. A shame for Bradford that they went down the route of trying to promote something that was impossible because it made a good crowd look not as good as it actually was. And, and the fictitious idea, that again, you know, treat your, your crowd with a deal of respect and, and don't expect them to see a an in joke that actually isn't a joke. Good win for Witness at York, who have York signing players all the time because they had a very small squad. Levi Edwards, good signing. So, yeah, in- interesting first week in the championship. I haven't got the league especially for me, so I can't tell you everything that happened. But well, it's good, I'm sure. E- every attendance bar Swinton was over 2,000. A couple nearly touched 3,000, and Bradford was 4,500, 4,800 or something. So, yeah, encouraging. Everything is encouraging. Everything was vaguely positive at this point in time. Um, we'll, we'll see how that goes on as the season goes. Obviously, they've got League One to start. Women's Super League, the Wheelchair Super League, which we don't know what's happening with again. And all the other bits and pieces of the sport. All, all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. And now today, that Sky are going to show the three... Super League Grand Finals on the telly as they did this year. So, uh, where's the Women's Grand Final this year? Do we know you? Sky as well, I think. No, no, I mean, what, what, what venue? Oh, no. No, I don't know how they're <laughs> going to do that. I don't know how they're going to do that. It's interesting now what they do with the Wheelchair Grand Final because the, I know it's a different thing from the World Cup Final, but it was almost, that's almost set the standard for how things yes, it should look. Yes, look. Yeah, yeah. And venue. So whether you go to Sheffield again or somewhere, uh, you know, probably easier than going to Manchester, but it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. And just There's lots to be optimistic about, but still plenty to be pessimistic about as well. Lots to question. And the role is to question it, otherwise, what are we hit with? Just nodding. Just nodding. We're on the top of the, the moors yeah. at the moment, the summit of the M62. Why have they put a club here? There's no one there. Get a picture in the back of the farmhouse. Yeah. The famous. Uh, oh, they, they, they had to build the M62 around. No, they didn't. It's, it's not because they want to sell. Don't believe the people. It's fake news. And the water levels are up in the reservoirs. Oh, that's a positive. So as soon as, as soon as everything gets in the way next week, in Super League, he says as a proviso every time to the kids. People get upset that week from the championship. I would have gone to the championship launch, but I was working and he was in Keysland. And I think I'm banned from Keysland. But you will be able to read about it in the new issue of 4020 magazine. Looking forward to seeing Craig Lingard's hat when the next on the telly as well. Um, well, he's set the trend in bucket hats by the look of it. York on the telly this week, aren't they? York Bradford on, on Monday? Yes, yeah, Saints on the telly on uh, Saturday, Saturday morning. morning. Yeah. From St George yeah looking forward to that just going to see if I can see anyone I know from St Helens get on the telly I mean that's the reason, real reason to go to that I, I, we have to point out now you know if you've seen in the background of the Super League show well done to one but we didn't get a goodie bag because uh, no. some people Oinks. took them we stayed there to the bitter end and we are bitter now because we didn't get a, a goodie bag with an umbrella and a pen Pad and a pad and a bottle of whiskey. Miniature bottle of whiskey. And a lanyard. And a lanyard. What do we do with a lanyard? Well, I don't know because I've already got one on my thing. There was a crate of peas as well. Yeah, we're probably going to take them, can't we? But uh, I'm not a big fan of much of peas. I don't mind, but I don't need a whole crate for them. No. So that, that's it, the first one of 2023. Some interviews coming up with people. I'll probably have to record another bit to tell you who they are. Or just just the way you guess. <laughs> Do people know who Liam Farrell is? They know who Liam Farrell is. I'll cut out the bit where I said about the lead show because that was a bit of a bad question. Um, I'm getting people's names wrong, which is good. But apart from that, and I'm feeling a bit more positive now, but we'll temper that. Since it kicks off next week, 
Why is Sky for the Alps don't turn up? What if, what if their PA doesn't work? What if it snows? Yeah. Can they get Ricky Wilson for the Kaiser Chief? <laughs> what, you know, what if? What if? What, the fuel girls? Is it the fire breathers and stuff? Like an episode of The Hitman and Herbert at the Lee Sports Village. <laughs> I'm giving them ideas now. Derek, Derek Bowman's on the straight on the phone. Pete Waterman and Michaela Strachan at the next home game with a live leopard. If that doesn't happen at some point this season, I'll be very disappointed. Right, buy the magazine, it's out next week. It'll be out Thursday, Friday next week. I mean, we might do a podcast next week, I don't know yet. Um, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're back. We're back now. Back, back, back. Back. Here's some interviews. Enjoy your rugby league and uh, support the nurses. Right, time for some interviews before the cats come in and invade my studio, which is in fact the living room. First, we're going to hear from Lee Centurion, or not Centurions anymore, are they? Leopards, Hooker, Edwin Apape, on his Super League debut upcoming. Then, Leeds Rhinos cult hero Cameron Smith, new Hull Kingston Rovers coach Willie Peters, Liam Farrell, future England Rub Union defensive coach, or something or other, or maybe not. Caitlin Beavers of the Leeds Rhinos and World Cup winning star of the Halifax Panthers, Rob Hawkins. It's, it's, a, it's a cliche question at this time of the season, but how ready are you for the brand new 2023 Betfred Super League season? Uh, I'm ready and excited. Um, you know, to be getting the opportunity finally to play Super League, it's it's something that you know I won't I won't take for granted. I'm, I'm ready. I'm looking forward to it. We, we saw how passionate Papua New Guinea were during the World Cup I mean we knew it already but I guess you've got a, a, a nation watching you as you, you take your steps in Super League this season I think the passion has been always there you know rugby league is a is a you know national sport in PNG and every kid growing up in PNG loves rugby league so it's been the passion there and you saw it in the World Cup um, and with the 2023 season coming up I think um, all the people back in PNG that loves rugby league will be supporting me and uh, We'll be sending messages through social media, through messages or whatever to support me. So I feel like there's a lot of a support on my shoulder. And I'm, I'm standing on the shoulders of so many Papua New Guineans at, at, at the moment. How do you feel the, the step up is from the championship to, to Super League for you and your teammates? It's, it's, massive. it's a massive step up and um, to come into Super League, it, uh, it demands a lot because of the um, intensity of the game. So um, that's where I need to be. Uh, on top of my game, and on top of everything, you know, week in, week out, and day in, day out, to to get myself ready to come out and compete on, on a weekly basis. Very passionate fan base, and of course, you've got the return of the derbies against Wigan. How much are, are those fixtures being looked forward to? I think all the fans are buzzing. You know, we've got a town, rugby league town, in, um, Lee. Um, everything is looking. Everyone's looking forward for the local derby against Wigan, and I think it's a good, you know, good thing for us as players to. Uh, that's you know rugby league is it's in, you know every everyone wants to come in and see you know a local derbies and people having a good you know go at each other and stuff like that. So I think it's that's what I'm you know looking forward to play weekend at home. It, it seems strange because throughout the pre-season everyone's talking about league, but nothing about the uh, the on the field. So it's all about the badge, the kit, this, that, and the other, whatever the chairman's up to. There's, there's almost no pressure on the on the place because no one's been talking about you for months. Sorry? No, it's almost as if all the, the talk about Lee has been about things on off the field rather than on the field. It's, it, you, the players, the coaching staff can almost just get on with what you're doing without any pressure. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know, people can have their opinions on how you know how the organisation is running or how the team's running. You know, we as players and as coaching staff, we know what we are about and we know what we want to achieve this year on the field. You know, it's that's the most important part of it is to be consistent on the field and just to come out and compete every week and uh, I think we've got a fair you know clear clear head around what we want to achieve this year and where we want to get to and uh, what brand you know what we want to build this team around so that's that's the important part you brought in a lot of big name players Super League experience how is the team uh, the cohesion ahead of the season are you ready for that first game against Salford? Oh, yeah, it's, it's still a work in progress you know being um, being a you know, different team altogether compared to last year because last year we had a bunch of team and then uh, obviously with the team being promoted we had 10 more than 10 players coming in so um, we're working still working on combinations and stuff and trying to get our get our you know um, combinations right and um, yeah hopefully we, we go right this year 
I mean, I was going to say straight away, I mean, what's it like being a cult? But uh, it's, it's bad, bad sound in here. You are a cult hero to some Leeds fans. What, what is that like? What, what, do you mean, what do you mean by cult hero? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm grateful for any recognition I get. Um, it's awesome that they've created a, you know, a, a society. Um, I would have saying then I'd, I'd love to meet the guys that have, have founded it, you know, and give them my appreciation. Um, but as far as that goes, I'm, I'm very grateful, and um, any recognition, you know, is, is awesome. I mean, I don't know, but they'll be hiding out behind the, uh, the change rooms now after the end of the game. Leeds Rhinos, grand finalists last year, completely unexpected back the midway point of the season. W- what happened? What did Ron Smith change? Um, I think he just changed the, um, the, the culture. Uh, the lads were coming in with a smile on the face. We were playing on the field with a smile on our face. Um, we developed some belief, uh, some determination to win. Um, and I think that's about it, to be honest, mate. I think it's it's really cliche saying, but you know, it's, it's credit to the lads that we had and at, at that time. I think at one point in the year we were, we were 11th and then we ended up in the grand final at the end of the year. So... Um, Rowan played a huge part in that, and but also the the players that you know we looked at each other and decided that we wanted to do something, and you know that, that that's what happened. So it was a hell of a roller coaster. As a young player coming through at Leeds, what's it like when you you know walking through the tunnel? There's all the history, all the great teams of the past in the far past, and the, the recent history as well. Is is that a pressure? Is that a good pressure to have on you? Yeah, and um, I'm a, I'm a student of the game. I've, I've been involved in it since four years old. It's I get uh, I get Mick taken out of me all the time because I, I never shut up about talking about it. Um, for me to be able to come through the lead system and then be involved, I've just signed up until I'm, I'm 27 years old, so it means I'll be at the club. I'll be playing at the club 10 years. Um, it, it's, it's all I've ever dreamed of, and uh, to be honest, it, you can never replicate that feeling of running out on a Friday night at Edinley and the you know the fans are on top of you and. That, that added a little bit of pressure of how heavy the badge is and how heavy the shirt is and you know the, the fans and the club deserve some success um, I think it just just adds to that um, add to that feeling and uh, it's incredibly special The coach gave us lots to talk about this week by not choosing a captain what is it like in, in the group you say? I'm guessing there are some who are louder some who are quieter and do you really need someone just to uh, toss a coin before a match? Yeah I think that's a, that's a great way that you've put it at the start I think it's a little bit outdated that um, there's one specific guy that goes and does the, the toss and um, I feel like we've got a, a, a very special group in terms of having tons of leaders in, in one in one team so uh, for Owen to take the collective approach and have, a, have numerous lads chip in when they need to chip in or take a step back when they need to t- step back um, I think it'll be the right balance and I think if we get that from each player because um, I feel like if, if the one guy's given the role it almost takes the voice off other people and they feel like they don't want to, to add uh, to, to what we're doing. So um, if, you know, the, the cases that we're going with a collective group that's going to be uh, in charge, that different people bring different qualities and um, it, if people continue to add, then I don't think we can go far wrong. You say you're a student of the game then, obviously a club with lots of history as you mentioned, but in last year, you get to the grand final. The women win the grand final. The wheelchair team got to a grand final, won the Challenge Cup final. The PDRL team won the grand final. Everyone won everything last year. How does the club copy that success this year? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. No pressure, um, no yeah, pressure. no pressure. Um, I just feel like that, regardless of any team that representing Leeds. Um, we, we all carry the, the same qualities uh, in terms of wanting to work hard and, and wanting to win. Uh, while ever I've been growing up, Leeds have always been successful. Um, and to, to say that you know we've got tons of teams from one te- from one club, sorry, um, all being successful. Um, I don't think it's necessarily about copying it, but I think it's about just implementing what they did week to week last year. And then if they're consistent with that, then you know we'll we'll replicate it again. The normalised part of your game is to be a ball player in the traditional loose forward who gets the ball away. Rowan seemed to unlock that a little bit in you last year. Do you think that was part of the reason behind getting to Old Trafford? 
Yeah, uh, well, not necessarily. Uh, I'm not saying you know I, I'm the reason why we got there. Um, I think it's the the style that um, he implemented to the to the tons of players who love to play with the ball in the team. Obviously, I love playing with the ball. Um, we've got other players that also love to express themselves. So I think Rowan just unlocking that potential in and around the squad, um, having the philosophy of testing our skill and being brave with our skill. Um, we scored some amazing tries. We look like we can score from anywhere on the park. And even going down, you know, we, we went away to Catalan and we were down 30 points with 12 men on the field and we still were managing to throw the ball around to, to score points. Um, you know, in, in my eyes, um, it was just the, the philosophy of everybody wanting to play and um, express themselves. So I'm really lucky that Rowan allowed me to do that in the middle of the field and, you know, it unlocked... Um, I touched on earlier that my role is to to let other people bring themselves out and, and, and add to their game. So as long as I can continue to do that, um, I'm sure we can, you know, go really well. Which is fair to say other coaches haven't allowed you to do and maybe inhibited your style. But do you think there's a change? Because Tony Smith's been saying if Super League's really going to sell itself in this brave new IMG era, we've got to entertain. Rowan clearly got to a grand final by wanting to play attacking rugby first. Are you looking forward to this season because attack is going to be perhaps more than defence this year? Yeah, and I think you know fans love seeing the uh, teams play with flair and our team is full of flair. So um, as long as we can continue to um, encourage to, to attack teams... Um, then you know it'll be great for the sport and uh, hopefully get as many spectators watching as, as possible. I caught everybody on the blind side a bit last year with that run. That one minute, oh, it's going to be relegation. Next minute, have on you're in the playoffs. You won't have that this year. People will be planning on how to be the best that Leeds can be. Does that mean that it's harder this year, or that the weight of expectation is going to be greater from people outside, or does, has that not affected your training? No, that's not that's not affected our training one bit. Uh, we can only control, you know, what we have in, in the group and in that present time. So we're not looking too far ahead, and we're not looking what's happened previously. What happened last year is done now, and um, we'll just be taking every fixture as it comes, um, regardless of what people are saying outside. I think it's important that we can control what we can control, and then you know, consistency is probably the word that I'd go with. Um, if we can continue to be consistent in that in that field and like we was at the back end of last year then um, there's no need to think about the pressure Start of a new season yeah. coach of Hull KR how ready are you for the uh, the challenge of leading one of the biggest clubs in the competition soon find out <laughs> uh, been a really good pre-season strong pre-season um, I've had a good six to eight months to, to prepare so really looking forward to the start of the season um, but as I say it's a it's always challenging when you get when you when you ride the roller coaster. I've been in rugby league long enough now to know it's uh, it's not all rosy. So um, there'll be some you know, bumps along the way, but we'll get through them. How important was that period of time? You knew you were getting a job. You knew you were coming in. You could plan for the, the new year rather than just being parachuted in at the last minute. Yeah, I was fortunate be, being my first you know, head coach in role. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm grateful for that because it's given me time to plan and prepare. I think if you get thrown straight in and you're not ready, then you're in some serious trouble. So. Um, you know, I've obviously done my apprenticeship, but in terms of the six to eight months, it was a, it was a good time for me to be able to prepare and, and plan. And I suppose, yeah, it's just set, set the structure of the club, of the club that, that we needed. Um, it's been yeah, it's been good. We've got two young halfbacks coaching this year at Hull KR. I presume your emphasis will be on attack, and it's something that. So Tony and Rowan Smith have been saying we need to entertain. Will, will that be your philosophy this year? It is, but to be honest, um, defence. I'm, I'm a big believer in you need to get your defence sorted first. I, I, I totally understand the game over here in terms of, uh, and I played in it, and, I, and I'm now I'm coaching in it. That we are in the entertainment business, so we need to entertain, and we'll definitely do that. Um, you know, I'm a believer in that. You give your, your players freedom to play, uh, but there needs to be some element of discipline within that. Um, but I think you need to earn the right to be able to play play some footy. So. Um, you do that by defending well. So that's that's my philosophy. Um, obviously, if I had to pick one, it would be defence over attack, but they are just as important as each other. In terms of your overseas imports, what wasn't a great year last year for Rovers because you didn't get enough game time out of some of those players. You've recruited a little bit differently this year. Do you think that the guys that you've got are, are going to give you what you need? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I've got them over here to do. So... Um, 
you know, there, there's a lot of factors that that come into play when, when an Australian comes over to this side of the world, you know, to England to play. Obviously, how to handle the weather conditions, how to handle, as I said before, you know, the different stadiums and. There's, there's a little bit of adversity around that, but, but it's more so around, uh, obviously, their family settling in. That's the key, you know, making sure that they settle in, but their, their families uh, settle in more importantly because they get to go to training every day, they get to live their dream. If they're not happy at home, then that can affect the, the players as well. So providing all that's in place, um, which at the moment so far so good, then I'm expecting the players to, to perform. Off the field, a new board of directors with investment on the horizon, own the stadium, some redevelopment there. You probably haven't seen yet, but you'll get to experience Craven Street and all that kind of thing. Exciting times to be involved with a club like yeah, it, it is, absolutely it is. Yeah, we're ready to, to take off. Um, we're in a good position. Um, and, I'm, and I'm fortunate that I'm in a position now to, to be able to ride the, the wave with the, the, the club in, in, in a positive way. So... A lot of hard work needs to be done. It's, there's a lot of hard work that has been done, but we haven't done anything yet. Um, we need to work hard. We need to still have that vision of, of where we want to go um, and have a plan how to get there. So we're doing that at the moment. And just finally for me, in terms of your playing career, obviously hugely well thought of over here. You, you, you know what it's like. You know what the crowds are like. How much do you remember of that time and how fondly do you remember it? Yeah, love it. The, I was saying today, this morning, that uh, my year at Wigan was one of the best years of my life, no doubt. Um, yeah, the people are great over here. The, the environment to play, like they, they love their rugby league. I know it's only might be in small, smaller pockets, um, but those those areas, that, those, those those towns and those cities that, that love their rugby league, they are really, really passionate. And and to be honest, it's a uh, they are far louder than what, what the Australian crowd are. Um, and, and it's really enjoyable to play. You know, great memories as a player. Now I want to create great memories, memories as a coach. And shame that Gateshead didn't kick on because again that year you were there, it could have been anything. And if we were talking. 20 years hence now, there should have been a Super League team up in the Newcastle Yeah, area. yeah, it is. It, it was uh, obviously, you know, it, it's, it's a business. So at the time, uh, the business wasn't making making too much money, so they had to move and they went to Hull FC at the time. Uh, but it's a shame because there was a lot of hard work that went into that. I know Shane Richardson and, and Kath Hetherington um, did a wonderful job and, and they, they kept it behind the scenes of what was happening quiet. We, we just assumed that everything was fine and then obviously they made the decision at the end of the year to move to Hull FC. But... Um, yeah, it was, it was a good time in my life too. Yeah, yeah. Another season, Liam. How excited are you ahead of 2020? I know everyone will have asked you this already, but how excited are you for the new season? Very. Um, I think building on the back of last year, last year was a big success for us, but um, obviously a bit of a sorry end to the year. So if we can take bits out of last year, what worked really well for us and um, adding what we've learned this year, then hopefully it can be a success for us. You're winning the Challenge Cup and obviously just missing out on, on getting to the Grand Final in Old Trafford. How important is that as a target this year? Yeah, we, that's probably looking a bit further than what we have actually done at the moment. And um, one of the big things we've spoke about this year is just making sure we're focusing week in, week out. Um, and if we can do that, then we're going to give ourselves a shot of being in the big games. And that's what we want to be involved in. I think everyone does. Um, but it'd be a little bit, you know, naive to look too far ahead at the moment. Having the role as Wigan captain, you know, I grew up when Wigan were winning everything and seeing Andy Fowler and Sean Edwards and whatever lifting trophies. What does that mean to you to have that role? Yeah, obviously Andy Farrell was one of the big inspiration to me growing up as a kid. I, um, I was watching Wigan in the early 2000s, which was um, a period where Andy Farrell was probably one of the more inspirational leaders of the club. And I've been fortunate enough to be around Sean Lachlan for a long time and Tom Lula, who were two outstanding leaders in their own right. And um, if I can gain experience off the back of them and um, watching the likes of Andy Farrell as a kid, I, you know, hopefully I can do justice of being a Wigan captain obviously it's a great role to get, to get a future career in rugby are you, are you thinking 10-15 years down the line you could be coaching in the Six Nations oh no I don't think I can ever see myself being a coach <laughs> where do you see your plans after rugby what, what, what would you like to be doing in a few years time? Oh, I'd love to I'd definitely still be involved in the game I think I'd be silly not to but uh, probably more on the performance side of things and you know hope, I, lo- I love the game of rugby so uh, hopefully I can still be involved lead back in Super League how, how big a fixture is that obviously we know the Wigan Saints derby is the big one but they can't stand you with them, can they? No, it's, it's. I'd like to. Th- well, probably a big call saying it's as big a rivalry as we can say. It's, um, it would be a fiery one when we play each other, and I think I think if I'm right, what Brian said before, we play them three times this year, so um, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, with Lammy being coached and a few ex players there as well, so it makes it a very interesting game, and um, it's one we'll be looking forward to, but I'm sure they are too. No pressure, but you're now favourites to win it all again, aren't you? 
Well, uh, I didn't know that. Uh, someone said to me that I've been in so many finals and I didn't believe that either. Um, I think as a club, we just see where we go. We've got expectations. Um, hopefully we exceed them. Um, I don't feel like there's ever pressure because within our camp, well, externally, because in our camp, there's, we've always, we're always diving to be our best. So uh, if success comes from it, then that's paid off very well. Speaking of pay, now you've mentioned it, I think people think you're getting paid thousands and thousands of years. We're not quite at that stage yet, though. No, uh, yeah, I've seen plenty of rumours saying that we're full-time and stuff like that. I wish that was the case, but no, uh, it's a contribution fee, uh, a win bonus. Um, it's a massive step in the right direction. We started playing rugby league because we wanted to play with our friends and we love the sport. And the payment, it's just a cherry on top. We're still doing the same. We're still playing with our mates and we're still playing the sport with the, that we love at the highest level. So, um, yeah, it's fantastic and hopefully it'll grow, but it's not the be-all and end-all. No, as, as, as important as a few extra quid is to everyone, especially these days, how important is the fact that you've got the support of the club, the, the staff, the facilities at, at Leeds? How important is that in terms of building the, the Rhinos brand as a women's team? Oh, massive. It's absolutely massive. Um, I feel like the financial status... It, it is just um, another step, but people don't see what's happening behind the scenes. We train at the same ground as the men, we're playing at the same ground as the men, we get the same uh, treatment in terms of doctors, physios, the coaches, staff's absolutely phenomenal. I honestly can't put a cap on where we are at the moment. Leeds, I think, I, I, I'm not being biased, but I would say it has the best facilities and the best care for their teams. And uh, I always speak so highly of the team that I'm about because it's my hometown team and I'm so honoured to be a part of it. So, yeah, uh, to be part of Leeds, I'm so proud and I think that the way that the game's going, it can only get better. How important are things like that? the fact that you play at Headingley in terms of, you're doing exactly the same as the men. You know, I know Wheatwood was a great facility and everything, but now you're playing, you're on the same level playing for it. Yeah, massively, and at the same time we are playing curtain raisins for the men so we're getting used to playing in front of those crowds we're getting used to playing in the stadium when when there's an atmosphere and that's what we need we need an increase in attendances to be able to advance to the next level of what is expected in the women's super league um, and that comes from statistics and once the RFL and Super League and all that can see the statistics then the next level, the next step can be pushed on so uh, we're hoping to build a platform, we're hoping to build a foundation and I think that we're doing that very well. Amy Hardcastle scares me, uh, how important is it that she's on your side now rather than against you? Yeah, lovable off the field, you don't want to play against her and I think that's what we found out a few times last year. She's a fantastic addition to our squad um, and I think for both signings, the the fact that the experience in there, both played in massive uh, World Cups and finals, that's what we need. We've got so many new signings from the academy and the army and I think for them to look up to the likes of them. And I went, I, I, I look up to them and I, I'm, I'm not too far behind and yeah, I think it'll be a massive, a massive contribution to the squad in terms of um, the experience that we need on and off the field. Yeah, I've got to comment, stop mentioning that you, you know you, you're so experienced despite the fact that you're still young. Is it is it nice for you to have these players who've got that more experience in the squad so you can kind of take a step back from that leadership? Uh, I'll never take a step back from the leadership role. Um, uh, I am I'm classed as apparently one of the the experienced ones in the team, which I do find uh, quite funny. It's not it's not something I ever thought would be a thing, but yeah, um, it's very exciting to see what they can bring. It's like I said, it's not just on the field; it's off. Uh, it's it's the expectations. It's it's everything that comes with being a rugby league player, and they're the absolutely fantastic people to be broca broadcasting that and showing what we can do as a club. Um, yeah, I think them coming in helps other people, but it also spurs people on. And uh, I'm hoping, like I said, that they're all, as much as an inspiration to me as they are for the rest of the squad. When you first find out that Amy was coming in, Georgia Hale from the NRLW, what was the first impression with yourselves and your teammates? Uh, I don't think there was much pressure. I think it's it's a relief. It's it gives it gave a buzz around the room because we're we're adding to a, an already fantastic squad. Uh, and it gets very excited for the 2023 season and to look around at the squad, it's a fairly new squad now this year and to look around and think we're going to be alright, we're, we're going we're gonna to go out and prove a, uh, prove a few things here, I think is, is impressive um, so there weren't any worry in people's minds um, although people are fighting for positions especially with the, the financial status coming in, 
there hasn't been a change in the ethos and um, basically just the feeling around camp. It is a family and we'll take people in like a family and I don't think positional-wise people get too concerned. Finally, the assault course, the army training. <laughs> how, how was that? How did you feel? Is that something you're a fan of? Are you glad to see the back of it? Um, I look forward to it every year. I think it's something that you learn so much about your teammates, how they cope under pressure, how they like to be spurred on, do they like to be spurred on. Um, and I think it massively helps knowing that off the field. So when you go on the field in those tough situations as the assault course and being put through your paces, how are they going to respond to your, your kind of... Um, communication so I think it's a massive thing for the squad and I think it's the best thing that we can do and for us to look at what the army girls do every week I think it kind of gives us a new appreciation for what they go through and we I think we sometimes forget that they 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 serve our country and uh, some of us do it for rugby but it's nothing on it's nothing anywhere near on the level that where they are so for us to have an insight into their lives and to be pushed through our paces, I think, is fantastic for the team and fantastic for the individuals. I mean, this is the most pointless question to be asked because you'll have been asked it a million times by now. Has it sunk in yet? Super League and World Cup winner in the same year? I don't think it can like sink in, really. I think just the way how we were able to do it, how close the Super League match was uh, between Leeds, the grand final, and just how the same with against France in the World Cup, especially on home soil. It was amazing to see at least we could get one uh, England team to actually win the World Cup and the men and the women fought the hearts out and they came close to actually reaching that final as well but I think just the way the sport's grown within a space of like 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 a few years at least uh, since we started actually getting our games broadcasted I mean there's nothing really we can actually uh, say except it's just going up and up from here well, It's almost meteoric again it's a cliche word but going from grounds of a handful of people to a big crowd on the telly, purpose-built court, world champions. Did you ever imagine anything like that could happen? To be honest, for myself, no. I just saw it as being like, right, it's just rugby league on a Sunday, just hit like an amateur level, but say we're actually hitting like a really good level to say we're getting broadcasted more, we're getting opportunities like this where we're getting invited to the launches of the, of the Super League, well, all three Super Leagues, and also having four opportunities with new kits and stuff like that, more clubs are wanting to get involved and set up teams. So then the current clubs that have a wheelchair team are branching out and actually helping those clubs a lot more to actually get more players, get fun into them so they can buy these expensive chairs so that they can hit that players can hit a peak performance. You also you meet Rosie. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, that, that was amazing in itself. Uh, Princess Kate was really genuine to speak to and uh, it was a great day out for the whole team to do and I don't like like I said it, it can only go go higher from here when, yeah, when you're meeting royalty and you're on national BBC you win a world cup essentially you're, you're famous like does that how does that sink in do you know what I mean like is it <laughs> I don't like I don't see it as I don't see the fame side of it because I see it as I'm a player who enjoys playing for his club and his country as well. And I think just if you have that mentality where you just enjoy playing it because it's it's your favourite sport, that's that oversees all the fame side of it and all the growing numbers on like followers for Twitter and Instagram and it's and it helps helps me helps me myself and keep motivated with the sport and want to do better. Which one of your um, World Cup winning teammates and is likely to turn up on Celebrity MasterChef or in the jungle or whatever? Who's, who's likely to grab that fame by the strip? Love Island. Oh, Love Island. Yeah, Love Island. Love Island I don't know about, but I know <laughs> I know definitely like something like Celebrity MasterChef, Seb, Seb Bashar will always, will always try and grab the limelight and try and get any little thing he can. I mean, his, his highlight from the World Cup was having dessert with Claire Baldin, which was amazing in its own right, because a few of us did it as well. I mean, uh, after, sorry, after the World Cup, what I want to know is after the World Cup win, what, was, what happened in the after party? Where did you go? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you partying for? Are you still partying? <laughs> no, I'm not really partying as much. Uh, I know from us, like, after that World Cup, we, went, we had a little, we had a room inside Manchester Central where we had all family friends, um, of all teammates, and we even had a few other teams. So we had, I had a few Halifax teammates, and then we also had 
um, a couple of the Australian team yeah. come and celebrate with us. So we were there, had a few drinks, and then we went straight back to the hotel where thankfully the hotel allowed us to go downstairs where the bar and all yeah. the dining area was, and we had a party down there. And I know there were definitely scenes on Twitter about us partying <laughs> with a speaker. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just the best part, really. Uh, we had that, and then the day after we went straight after the grand final with, well, the World Cup final against. Uh, New Zealand and Australia for the women's and Samoa and New Zealand and New- Australia sorry for uh, um, for the men's so I mean we had that and a lot of us were hung over that night so <laughs> I remember I didn't, I didn't, after winning World Cup I didn't actually go to up back to my room till about 5am five, five well that's that's, 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 that's all my issue <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah as well oh, yeah. Yeah. can you tell us a bit about you said 10 years you've been playing as well how did you yeah, get so, into it so, this, so yeah, this, yeah your background yeah this is my first this is my this will be my 10th season and uh, I got my disability at about, about 10 11 and a half year old and uh, I started playing running rugby for Siddle and after I couldn't play the running game anymore, I looked to play the wheelchair because you can't get a rugby league fix and stop playing <laughs> simply. And uh, I found out about the wheelchair game and uh, haven't stopped since really. And it's definitely been a lot of hard work. I did a lot of England trials at the start of my career, uh, which were unsuccessful at the time. And then in 2019, I got the call up and the rest is history. And what was the, the disability that you... Uh, so my, my disability is chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay, right. So it's it's very... Which is not, does not go not, well with rugby league, considering it's such a physically... It, de- it definitely does Yeah, intense no, sport it, and demanding sport, yeah. Oh, it definitely doesn't, but yeah. I mean, it's... I was like breaking down barriers, and yeah. I think... That's why I think I love this spot so much as well, is because it, it, it broke down barriers in its own right. In the World Cup, I mean, you're really sending a message that no matter, you know, someone who has a disability or gets diagnosed, that's not the end for them on the no. sporting field. You know, you guys have approved that you're living proof. Yeah, that was that was one of the things uh, that we love to preach, and it's something that I, that I preach as well inside of uh, when I go to schools. I've done, I've done like, a couple of school trips. I've gone to a couple of rugby, uh, amateur rugby league teams, and I've said, I've said the same thing, and that is, it doesn't matter what, what happens in life, whether you're disabled, non-disabled, if you want to play this sport, you're more than welcome to. Obviously, not not taking them away from the running game, because I mean, every kid has a dream, and I don't think a lot of kids dream about playing a wheelchair game until probably the World Cup. And that that message just seems to be growing because there's so many clubs now starting teams, yeah. TV coverage, obviously the Super League coverage. It's just yeah, it's growing and growing. You know, from as Rich said, from when you would have started, there was you know two people and a dog, and now it's just bigger and bigger. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's it's amazing to see how far it's come for the for the amount of time that I played anyway. But I know there's people that have played for longer, and uh, they could tell you a lot more about like where they where they came from with where it started out. And it's it's mental really to hear about their stories about what they came through. And I know I love I love hearing uh, after the World Cup about how Seb uh, it was very it was very emotional mm-hmm. after. Uh, Holt will, sorry, if you were watching, and that was, he was emotional after losing the 2017 one, I literally had a try and say we won it for a try, won it by a try as well, it, nice bit of revenge and uh, nice bit of redemption for the players who did play in 2017. You like to give a bit out on pitch, don't you? A bit, bit, a bit, a bit of chatter, a bit of, bit of out there, you, you look like you enjoy yourself out there. I, it's tough not, it's very tough not to enjoy yourself, it's an amazing sport, I mean, we're breaking down barriers and we're, we're joining we're joining the running game, the men's and women's, and uh, showing it why why we should be on the same platform of broadcasting, and that's why it's the best sport in the world. But I think, I think, nice bit, nice bit of talk, and nice bit of uh, nice bit of like trash talk kind of bit, kind of brings a bit of rivalry to it a little bit. So it brings a nice bit of a heated game, but in a friendly heated competition. The, the Jake Connor of the wheelchair game. Say again, sorry. The Jake Connor of the wheelchair game. No, I can't say I am no. <laughs> Now, are you talking about talk? Um, the French. I mean, what not only what happened during the game, yeah. but after the game. I mean, the next time you play them, that that rivalry is just, you know. Well, yeah, we we like, we know the French are going to be tough. They're going to keep. They're going to be wanting to win it back um, in the next World Cup. But we also have to keep an eye out for the other nations. We can't be complacent. If we talk about US, for instance, it's their first World Cup, and they nearly made it to the semi-finals, and that that was just amazing. To say it was from what it only had. 
one of the players plays for Wigan and to say that the rest he wasn't the one that was doing it doing it all there were so many other players on that pitch that led the way for nearly making that semi-final and credit to them they're definitely going to be a threat in the future Australia were definitely going to be a threat they always have been and I mean it's just constantly looking out for them as well we can't lose the respect for any any nation or any team in general if we talk about Super League because you lose your respect you lose complacency and that's when you lose matches because of mistakes and as daft as it sounds how important is having a trophy like that that is similar to the men's Super League now the women's Super League have got the similar kind of trophy it's not just something we've found at the back of a cupboard it's the actual it's the Super League trophy it's recognisable yeah so I went to uh, I went to a Super League uh, they wanted to do like a photo shoot pretty much and uh, I, like, I didn't even know that the trophy were getting made because they're like oh well we didn't bring you all the trophy because yours is, you got a new one getting made don't you and I'm like didn't know about that I went oh well you know now and I'm like yeah so, I mean, it's amazing to see how it is. It's got, it It shows proper branding. It shows that we are a part of the Betfred Super League and we are alongside the men and the women on this amazing stage and on this amazing journey.